untimely deaths, unexpected complications, and unsolicited photos. Experiences during and after My 600 Pound Life can be even more daunting than how they appear on screen. My 600 Pound Life receives a lot of praise for helping patients turn their lives around. In the process, however, it depicts an inaccurate portrayal of bariatric surgery. Dr. Colleen Tewksbury explains the following in her published research on bariatric surgery and nutrition care processes. What you see on these extreme shows are only one small component of what it is actually like for patients. For example, one of the many aspects of the surgery viewers may miss or not know from My 600 Pound Life is that patients can still gain the weight back after surgery. According to Mayo Clinic, for the most sustainable post-surgery results, patients must completely change their lifestyle, from what they eat to how active they are. Tewksbury echoed these sentiments in her study, writing, The surgery is not a cure. Weight management care is long-term and requires lifelong follow-up. Per Penn Medicine News, in their program, patients are typically closely monitored for about 90 days post-surgery, but care does not stop there. They're also provided with a support network and resources that they can easily access. Unfortunately, many patients on My 600 Pound Life gained the weight back or succumbed to their addictions after their time on the show. It'd be easy for someone to see bariatric surgery as a magic cure that will change their lives overnight after watching My 600 Pound Life. This is mostly because more good stories make the headlines than the bad ones. But in reality, the surgery is not a catch-all. Even with post-surgery supervision, complications may still occur. Amber Rochdy, who lost up to 400 pounds after her surgery, detailed her experience with some fans in an extensive Q&A on her Facebook page. When asked how long it took for her body to start operating like it once did, she replied, Hair started coming back in after about 10 months, stopped falling out after 8. I had hecka bad acne for about a year. It just takes time. Hang in there. Another former participant who had serious complications was Kalisa McMillian, who died from the issue she faced after her surgery. Although she lost 150 pounds from her starting weight on the show of 643 pounds, she'd had a prior heart attack. Post-surgery, McMillian hemorrhaged, was septic, and ended up in a medically induced coma before recovering. Several months later, however, she sadly passed away. Food makes me so happy that just seeing it and smelling it starts to help me feel better and helps with my anxiety. Not only is there a possibility of complications post-bariatric surgery, but patients must undergo strict dietary restrictions for five to six weeks afterward to ensure the best results. Prescribed by Dr. Now, some extremes include not even being able to consume certain vegetables. And with a diet that has such extreme restrictions, there are sure to be some side effects. Post-surgery patients also have to eat small amounts of food at a time and at a slow pace. Not adhering to these guidelines can result in vomiting and, in some cases, eating disorders. While a liquid diet is a go-to, some people don't recognize the high amount of calories in some non-solids, such as milkshakes and sweetened juices. Dumping syndrome can occur if a patient eats too many sugary foods, leading to uncomfortable symptoms like cramping and diarrhea. Another possibility is developing sensitivities to foods that they used to be able to eat. In some cases, gluten or lactose intolerance is a result. Unfortunately, death is a tragedy that's taken place on My 600 Pound Life, as at least 10 participants have died since its premiere. Take season one's Henry Foots. He did everything he was supposed to do, going from 715 to 275 pounds. But just when things were going well, Foots experienced personal troubles, including his father's death. He was also responsible for the death of a woman when the bus he was driving crashed into another vehicle and he ran into the pedestrian waiting on a corner. Foots apparently had a medical episode prior to the crash. He died about a year later. The cause of death is unknown. Gina Crazley also died at age 30 just weeks after announcing she was immobile due to an illness. Then there's season six's James Bonner, who committed suicide in 2018. Per the New York Post, his family filed the first lawsuit in a parent suit against the show. Season 5's James King is another patient who tragically died at age 49. Along with his wife, he was survived by two sons and four daughters. Being that My 600 Pound Life has been on the air for as long as it has, one would assume the patients receive handsome checks for their participation. Yet, even while all medical expenses from the gastric bypass surgery are taken care of, the participants are only paid an appearance fee of $1,500 for the entire year of being on the show. Additionally, they are only given a $2,500 stipend to move to Houston. 
For context, the average rent for an apartment in Houston is $1,263, and gastric bypass surgery averages around $23,000. Most importantly, however, Dr. Now is reportedly rolling in dough. He is allegedly worth $6 million. However, per Houstonia, Dr. Now isn't getting rich off these surgeries. He went on record saying the following about his compensation for the procedures. Looking at the moral obligation that we've got, you see somebody who has no life who could have a life. We don't need to be rich. We do make a living, but we don't need to worry about making a living out of every patient we see. On the show, participants frequently detail being victims of abuse. Season 6's Shanae Murray, for example, entered My 600-Pound Life at nearly 700 pounds. What viewers learned, however, was that Murray gained all of her weight by finding comfort in food after a traumatic experience as a child. There was one time where we was at my uncle's house and I was molested by my cousin. On the show, Murray explained, Inside, I felt terrible, but I just hid all my feelings in. I started sneaking food right after that incident. Food made me feel better. So then, I started putting on weight. Similarly, Season 7's Mercedes Cephas also had a tragic past. She revealed how her downward spiral into destructive eating occurred after she had been sexually abused by a family member from a young age. In addition to the rest of her siblings suffering the same fate, Mercedes had to deal with the extra pressure of taking care of her mom when she got older. And then there's Doug Armstrong, who turned to food for comfort after being abandoned by his mother. My dad did the best he could. He was in the military, though, so he was away a lot of the time. On the show, Armstrong elaborated, and when I was eight, a nanny's son who was older decided to have an inappropriate relationship with me. So I dealt with the trauma of being abused by eating, and I started to gain weight. While My 600-Pound Life is a true medical journey with actual surgeries being performed, it's still a television show that answers to ratings. Nothing showed that more than in 2020 when Season 8's Gina Marie Crazley filed suit against Megala Media, the studio that produces the series. She claimed that the show's producers were negligent and intentionally caused her emotional distress. She also said that they forced her to consume tremendous amounts of food to further her out-of-control eating narrative and to depict her as someone who could not follow the diet. Crazley claimed that the show did not provide mental health resources or give her a psychological evaluation upon arrival. She wasn't the only cast member who took issue with how Dr. Now and Megalomedia ran operations, though. Nine other suits were filed, which a court consolidated into one. Among those was Season 6's Alicia Kiergan. Her suit stated the following. Plaintiff was provided a five-question mental health survey a couple of hours before her procedure that asked questions with true or false answers. If she answered one of the questions incorrectly, the producers would take the form away and give her another until she answered all of the questions correctly. Forcing patients to eat excessively while on camera is not the only accusation of bad ethics the My 600 Pound Life production team has faced. Season 7's Destiny Lachey, the first trans woman to appear on the reality series, filed a suit against the show alleging she was promised mental health treatment. However, she was only provided one therapy session to address her grief. According to court papers obtained by The Sun, Lachey levied serious accusations against the show, including fraud and emotional distress. As just one example, her court papers included details about her experience during production, in which she was pressured to shave her face. The filming of her shaving was so painful that it was not made part of the show. The stress led plaintiff to have a breakdown in which she kicked the producers out of her home and threatened to kill them and herself. Lachey later died in February of 2022, although her cause of death was not revealed. While My 600 Pound Life has a devoted fan base, the notoriety it's gained over the years has unfortunately made some patients become targets of online harassment. One participant, Stephen Asante, faced problems after he left the show, got married, and became a stepfather. It's been nothing but harassment towards me, my wife, and my family, and it sickens me to the core. Steven said to Starcasm, All I ask is for people to get a life and move on, because not everything you see on television is accurate, but small-minded folks will continue to believe that it is. Similarly, Catherine Lemansky, the fiancé of cast member Robert Bouchelle, was sent offensive images after he died. I've gotten more lewd pics in my Facebook than the porn industry. I'm not kidding. This is the unfortunate reality of people who appear on television, even if they were only seeking help and not necessarily fame and fortune. If you are struggling with an eating disorder or know someone who is, help is available. 
Visit the National Eating Disorders Association website or contact NIDA's live helpline at 1-800-931-2237. You can also receive 24-7 crisis support via text. Send NIDA to 741-741.